have um, Francis Thompson for the presentation. I hope that I inspire you to action, but I fear there may be a little bit of fear in this. Um, you heard the major talk about the future of warfare and the reliance on technology. And what you know about that is for him to, and the TNI to be successful, they need that technology. They need constant, persistent, and reliable access to that technology. And almost all of that technology relies on the internet. And so in many ways, I have to thank you, Major, because it's the perfect setup to my call to you for cybersecurity. I hope to persuade you that it's important and why it's important. And I'll do that partly by painting the frightening consequences of failing to, t to, do, to take action in the area of cybersecurity. And I hope to persuade you about why this is urgent. It requires not only government action, but it requires, the government will require the private sector, the young people, to work together to set standards and policy to ensure your cyber health. Let's talk about just how we rely, how an economy, an economy that you're, we heard this morning to grow at, at the rate it is by 2030. In 2011, the average number of emails in a single day was 419 billion. The average number of Google searches in a single day, 4.7 billion. There were 20 petabytes of global mobile traffic each day last year. And on Cyber Monday, the biggest shopping day in the United States, there were 13.7 million items purchased through Amazon. The internet has been the greatest single engine of the creation of wealth that the world has probably ever seen over the last 10 years alone. In 2002, Amazon, it was worth $851 million. Today, its market cap is almost $13 billion. Apple, you will not be surprised. In 2002, it was worth $5.7 billion. Today, it is worth $148 billion. And Google, 2004, it was worth 33.1 billion. Today, it is worth 43. With all that creation of wealth, there have come vulnerabilities. You know about people's personal information being stolen, emails being hacked, the theft of intellectual property, and the transfer of wealth that that causes. But there is also vulnerability in the public sector. In the public sector, as I mentioned, the weapons and technology that the United States, the United States and Indonesian and other militaries rely on. They, they do logistics, they deploy, they arm, they equip, they train. They do all these things relying on the backbone of the internet. And each one of you here today, to get here and to get home, will use something that relies on the internet. Electricity, the power grid, water, uh, air traffic, the traffic lights um, all rely, banking, all rely on the backbone of the internet. So how do you begin to think about this? Well, in 2009, a group of very senior former officials, Republican and Democrat, both parties in the United States, got together and decided what we were going to do was run an exercise to see how prepared we were. You'll see people who worked for President Bush, people who worked for President Clinton, and we, we worked through a simulation of a cyber attack. Cue the first clip, please. Two and a half months ago, a gaping security vulnerability in the operating systems of this nation's smartphones was exploited by the now infamous March Madness application. Now, federal government and industry officials believe this same application is shutting down the nation's cellular phone network. The president wants to know how bad the situation is likely to get and what we are doing to get our telecommunication system back to normal as quickly as possible. This is, in the industry, what we call a bot attack. Once loaded on a smartphone, this software will send that virus, that malware, that malicious software, to every person that's in that directory. I would not be surprised if this number jumps well beyond the 20 million already affected, because this is sort of like too many people trying to get onto a or off of a highway at exactly the same time. The arteries simply clog up. 
I just got a note saying that reports are coming in from all over the world indicating that the effects of this attack are not limited to users in the United States. I'm much more troubled about the um, the uh, contagion effects that have been alluded to. If, if this gets into our internet, as it seems likely, we have a major crisis. So I think a, a lot of our attention ought to be uh, focused on uh, is there an ability to um, to quarantine this problem before. Today, as we sit here, U.S. banks are the subject, the victims of a dedicated denial of service attack, not using the botnet like you saw, but using servers with huge bandwidth to flood them um, and deny customers the ability uh, to access their information. But the most serious one happened in the last six weeks. It's called the Shamoon virus. It was a routine called a wiper. And it was, it was a self-executing wiper. It went into the computers at Aramco, the Saudi uh, national oil company. It, it disrupted crucial systems. It replaced crucial files with the image of a burning US flag. It then put in additional garbage data that overwrote all of the crucial data and destroyed 30,000 computers. But it wasn't done. Within weeks, it also targeted the Raz gas in Qatar doing the exact same thing. It is the single most destructive internet attack the world has seen to date. And that's not the only one that's out there. The U.S. has seen probing attacks uh, against uh, on computer, SCADA systems, computer control systems, uh, against chemical plants, electricity, water, and transportation systems. In some of those systems, they actually gained access where they could have contaminated water supplies or shut off power grids. You will see in our exercise, this it doesn't it turns out it's not just the cell phones that you're shutting off. Clip two, please. What it, what it seems to me what we should be focused on and what serves the president here is wide-scale public panic. Welcome back to breaking news coverage on GNN, where in addition to the attacks on the nation's telecommunications infrastructure that we have been covering all day, we are also now receiving alarming reports of significant and growing power outages in major metropolitan areas in the eastern half of the United States. You're, you're likely to have lights going off in hospitals before long, air traffic controllers depend on the internet, our economy does in financial transfers. So I think, um, I think even if we still don't know precisely the motives of the people doing this, we know this has a major impact on national security. The effect is an act of war. You turn off everybody's cell phone, you don't allow them to bank, work, communicate. This is an attack on the United States. It may not be a bomb, but it's much more significant than a bomb going off. When you hear a senior presidential advisor getting ready to walk into the Oval Office and tell the president that the internet attack constitutes an act of war, you know we're not ready to have to really deal with this. Um, that was Joe Lockhart. I don't disagree with him. He was an advisor to President Bush. Last week, Sec U.S. Secretary of Defense Leon Panetta called the, the cyber realm the battle terrain of the 21st century. Given his concerns, uh, he what he worries about, what he says to us is, given this scenario, given what we've seen against Aramco, Saudi Arabia, and U.S. banks, the world, not just the U.S., is in a pre-9-11 moment. There will be, he says, and he is worried about, a cyber Pearl Harbor, where there are multiple attacks, cell phones, transportation, multiple banking, plus, a, plus taken together at the same time with a physical attack. And if we are not ready to deal with that, if we don't talk to one another, if we don't protect our own systems, the fact is uh, that we will overreact in a crisis. I would offer you one word of caution. The internet has been a force for freedom and for good. It has resulted in the overthrow of dictatorships, the transparency, the ability of people to demand transparency from their governments. Uh, and so we must be careful not to overreact in, as we secure it. Citizens and their governments must find ways to protect the internet without infringing on personal liberty. Exercises simulations are helpful, but you can see when someone talks about an act of war, the potential consequences 
a country might have if they wanted to retaliate without having the policies, the practice, the plans, and the capabilities in place. Nations will make mistakes. So I leave you, this is a call to action to you. It requires the youth who understands the value of the internet and also its technical vulnerabilities. It requires your government and it requires the private sector. Push for action, push for policies that, that are transparent and that you understand because without those policies, it will affect both commerce and security, and the people who will pay the price for the lack of preparation are the citizens. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, hello, my name is Gavin. Uh, I have a short question. Uh, the first question is, what's your opinion about Wikileaks? Thank you. You have the insider threat. You can build the best protection, but if you don't have good a good sense of the insider threat, then you've wasted your money. Um, Wikileaks is a real problem in the United States. The current administration is having to deal with it. But I think your point, the point I take from the question is, you can't just worry about sort of the internet and the technology of it. You have to worry about the people. It's training, it's understanding who has access, and then making sure people only have access to that which they really require. They are extraordinarily smart. They are extraordinarily capable. And so, in the United States, we go, uh, the US government actually goes to conferences where there are the black, the black hackers, as you refer to it, uh, and recruit. We look, sometimes people with the mentality of being a member of a gang or a particular group like that can be turned, but there are a lot of factors you have to look at and have to understand about what you're gonna give them access to and what training you're gonna put them through. But you're exactly right. You have to have a very careful vetting program, but that's one of the things that can be incredibly powerful in solving this problem. Thank you. Thank you. A big applause for Francis Dawson. Thank you very much.